So my name is Bobby, and I am with Dayton Children's. Um, I work in the neurology department. And I work in the upstairs uh, EMU department that we have up here at Dayton Children's Hospital. And this is my friend Adrian. Hello. And Adrian works in the downstairs clinic in the lab with the neurology clinic next door doing EEGs. How did you guys get into this, Bobby? Well, um, I got into this because I'm been medical for a long long time actually like almost 15 years and I decided to step into something a little more challenging so I thought why not do the brain because I know everything about all the other systems very um, cool how did you get into it Miss Adrian my story is very different I was trained on the job uh, it was a great opportunity a long long time ago they didn't have any EEG techs available they couldn't find anyone to hire so I was asked to train to perform these studies. I didn't even know what an EEG was at the time. So I took a chance, fell in love with the technology, and love working with kids, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So I went to school for it, and like Adrienne said, she just did the training on the job. Those are two options that you have coming into this field. It is a newer field, um, and it's starting to grow. So we thought we would tell you about it. Um, because it, it, it could be something you like to do later on. Um, so what we do here is we take the kids and we hook them up to machines um, and watch their monitors and see if we can catch any seizure-like activity. Um, sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Um, but Adrian, working down in the clinic, does them all day. <laughs> I perform routine EEG studies, and again, this is a test that is not invasive. It's nothing that hurts. Again, we just place electrodes strategically on, on children's heads, and our goal is for, for them to go to sleep so we can see their brain at rest. So we have about an hour and 15 minutes to get that done, and so we have these kids come in sleep-deprived and ready for a little nap and hope for the best. And we turn lights low and turn on some nice quiet music and, and look at their brain waves as they relax. Um, sometimes we do have to deal with uncooperative patients. That is a challenge. And our very last resort, if we just can't do what we need to do, um, some children do need to be sedated to um, have the electrodes placed before their study can even begin. Um, we don't really have to do that very much anymore because of distraction methods. We have a lot of wonderful hey, videos and our, our phones that come to the rescue often. Mm -hmm. So EEGs come a long way over the years, and we can get things done um, on our own, just here in an outpatient setting for the clinic. But for me, up in the hospital, you have an appointment, you have to come in. Um, we set you all up in one whole hospital room, um, and then we do the whole wrapping and everything, just like they do down here. But you can walk around the whole room. You spend the whole day. It's 24 hours. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll monitor you with cameras, kind of like that one. Um, and we'll be watching you all day, and we'll be checking for what you're doing, making try to make sure you're doing everything normally, um, making you comfortable, um, hoping to catch something that we were told that you're having problems with. And then if we don't, we'll try again the next day. The doctor sometimes will keep you a few days. It just depends on what we're looking for. But in the overall study, like I'm up, up on the seventh floor, and in the hospital, so I go everywhere and do these studies on all of the children. Whereas, um, what's the youngest you can do an EEG on? The youngest baby we have done an EEG on is actually just born and brought straight here. Um, so it can go from straight born to brought straight here to however mm -hmm. age you are until you're done being seen here. Wow. So. Yeah, EEGs are done to typically rule out seizures, and the only diagnostic test out there to prove or disprove that is an EEG. So it's kind of an old science, but uh, the, again, the only one. So it's very, very cool, and we feel kind of empowered by that, being, being those techs that can perform these studies to look at brain patterns, check to see if there is a seizure disorder present with these children, um, or what else is going on. Is it behavior? Is it something else? Or is it epilepsy? That's what we do. Yep. So, Adrian, what advice would you give a student in finding a career they love? Ooh, 
That's a very hard question because I think we all go through life thinking like, I'd be good at that. Sometimes your job just finds you there. So have an open mind. And I guess definitely do a lot of research to see what is out there because you never know. Some, some things you might not even know about today do exist and you could, you could be very good at them. Right, <laughs> right. I definitely have that same thing. I mm -hmm. was just in the medical field. I love the medical field. Yes. Um, but to move on and keep challenging myself was what I was aiming for. Uh, medical assisting is what I did. And I was like being a nurse. Mm -hmm. But then you want to expand a little more. We didn't touch neurology. So here I am learning yeah. about the brain. What did you want to be when you grew up? Anything in the medical field? Not at all. I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's what's so awesome. I wanted to be a farmer, for example. True story. I and am now, a farmer. <laughs> I love it. And now we are in this specialized, incredible um, field that um, is just growing and growing. So, again, mm -hmm. the possibilities are endless to what you could do, starting out as maybe just a simple EEG tech. I mean, you might end up in the operating room mm -hmm. uh, monitoring brain waves while a child is undergoing something very serious like a brain surgery. Mm -hmm. or, or doing other a nerve conduction study to find out what's going on with the nerves in the body to see if maybe we've got a blockage or something that we could fix. It just depends. Our field is really big and we even do sleep studies too. So if you think this might be something you want to do, for sure, uh, look into it. Just look into it. Absolutely. Good luck to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're going to have you lay down on the bed. We're going to pump the bed up. Both rails will be up for safety. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mark and measure your head. So these are all my supplies. I have paste. I have cleaning gel. I have bandage. I have tape. So what we'll do is we'll mark and measure you from your nose to the back of your head. And we'll mark and measure you from your ear to ear, which is preauricular to preauricular. And then we'll go all the way around your head just to see how big it is. And then when we're all done with that, we're gonna measure from the back of your head to the front of your head, which is uh, one way. And then we'll come over here and we'll do it this way. And then we'll come through what's called the transverse, which is just the front of your temple to the other front of your temple area. And then we'll do it again on the back of your head, the other side of the back of your head. Once we have marked and measured, we're going to collar on your head while we do it. And then we start cleaning each spot really good, which in a normal kid, this comes right off. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we'll take these little electrodes. We put the paste on it. We put it down on your head. And we'll tape it. After we're done putting the electrodes on, we wrap your whole head. You're going to have what we call a, a distress wrap. So that way, if you're walking around the rooms and stuff, you're not going to be able to pull that. It's not going anywhere. And if it does, you've walked around way too much. Usually, you'll have a lot more cords than this, but we're just doing an example. So I just want to show you guys. You'll look like little mummies when you come in here to see us. So this is a normal EEG. This is what we look at every day. And so there's artifact, all the squiggly lines, and then those are um, eye blinks right there. And then this muscle is the darker stuff that you see. And so what we're looking for is something out of the ordinary, not normal while we watch these all day long.